Good afternoon. Um, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, as you guys just talked to coach, uh, I took a year off and the biggest thing that I wanted to do taking a year off is really to assess my career, to recharge, refocus, and really align myself with a program or organization that I felt that had great core values, um, things that I was looking for, uh, a little bit of longevity, um, culture that I felt like was going in the right direction. And as coach just mentioned, I had several opportunities and our relationship started last year and it grew over the years when he was at uh, Appalachia State over that year. And I received a text um, at the end of the season and it came from uh, Coach Strength. And he asked me, he said, do you wanna really have an impact and come back to college and really focus on these young men? And um, I reached back out to him and I told him, I said, coach, you know what? I've been thinking about college uh, as well as the NFL. And I've been talking to my family, uh, my wife particularly about this. And uh, I'm definitely open for conversations. And that's how we started. And I'm excited to be here, guys. I really am. I think this is uh, a part of my journey uh, where I'm supposed to be right now. I'm looking forward to the challenge uh, each and every day is coming in here. Someone mentioned earlier about uh, not being in college since 05. And the biggest thing to me, football is football. Uh, I've always felt like, you know, it's all about making relationships when you start talking about recruiting. And uh, Coach alluded to that. And, you know, to me, that's what it start, That's where it starts. And uh, I have no problem with recruiting. Uh, I love the challenge. I love to be able to compete, uh, to go in these high schools and go into these homes and really try to get the best players in the country to come to Mizzou. So uh, I know you guys got tons of questions. So uh, I'm gonna open it up for that at this particular time. Go ahead, get your hands raised in the queue and we'll get started. Looks like first one's gonna be Gabe Beyond and Paul Mizzou. Take it away, Gabe. Yeah, Steve, uh, what are the big differences in coaching college kids and coaching NFL players? And I guess ultimately, why did you make the decision that you wanted to come back to this level as opposed to pursue what I, I assume would have been some of those opportunities would have been staying in the NFL? Well, let me say this first. I, I never allowed what I do to identify who I am as a person, uh, meaning I didn't really need the NFL shield to say, OK, I'm um, coaching in the league. Uh, as I stated before, I wanted a great situation. Uh, I wanted a situation that I felt was going in the right direction from a standpoint of culture, uh, standpoint of leadership. And I think Coach Drink is, um, exemplifies that. And uh, opportunity to be able to come in and compete and coach and teach uh, and really give my, my skill set uh, to some of these players that I felt like over the years I've done in college as well as in the pro, which is developing guys, you know, so. I don't really see it as a big difference. I saw it more to me as a fit and some of the things that I wanted to do. And that's why I'm so elated about being here at this program. Eric Blum, Columbia Tribune, go ahead. Steve, uh, Eli just mentioned you made one recruiting trip to try and get a defensive coordinator and that was in yourself. Was there, what was the moment or what was when the light bulb went off that Missouri was the right opportunity right now for you? Well, let, let me say this. Uh, I hope Coach Drink is as good in the home as he is with me for his closing, uh, because he was, uh, I, I tried to keep him off for a while uh, because again, I was looking at some other things, uh, but the more and more I prayed about it, the more my wife and I had discussions about it. I just knew that uh, after he came down to Charlotte and we had our, our, our time for his interview and went out to eat dinner, uh, I just felt the connection. You know, uh, I felt that everything that I stood for, I knew he stood for, I knew it was gonna be uh, the right fit. Uh, again, I keep talking about the culture and what I've learned, uh, particularly in my time in 18 at the Arizona Cardinals, it's, it's harder uh, to install a culture than it is to install a defense. And you have to have the right chemistry. You got to have the right people, coaches and players. Uh, and I felt like he's done a great job in really trying to assemble that here uh, with his staff and then the ability to go out and not just you know, draft guys, but go out and really recruit and uh, bring the guys that fit your program in uh, that, you know, you're going to be able to, to nurture and groom and grow and develop. So uh, that was the main reason for me. Mitch, 40 power, Mizzou. 
Steve, I know you've mentioned before looking for something that maybe had some longevity and you, you, you touched on that word earlier in this uh, in this press conference. I guess, why was that so important to you and, and why do you feel like you found that at Missouri? Well, when you look at um, the last couple of years, uh, you're going back to Arizona, one and done. You, you feel like you had a great situation in Cleveland a lot of talent there and all of a sudden again, one and done. So uh, I didn't really want to put my family in that situation again. So I decided to take a year off and really assess things. And when I talk about longevity, you look at uh, coach strengths just got here last year, he's going into his second year. Uh, and when you look at what he's put in place and, and then the direction in which his program is going, I just felt aligned in, in line with what he was doing, his vision, and the expectations. So again, I'm excited to be here and I'm looking forward to getting to work. Dave Madison with Post Success. Hey Steve, welcome to Columbia. Um, how did you mostly spend 2020 when you weren't coaching? Did you, a lot of film study, um, visiting with other coaches as much as you could, or how, how'd you spend that time? Uh, I had intentions of really, you know, going out and visiting coaches, college and pro. Uh, when COVID hit, of course, all of that got locked down. Uh, so I had access to um, the NFL film as well as the college film. And um, uh, a good buddy of mine, <clears throat> excuse me, Alonzo Escalante, he and I worked every day, you know, uh, Monday through Friday from nine to three. And we just took on different projects, you know, uh, just learning different things that the offense was doing for the trend, uh, looking at a little bit of the uh, NFL, uh, the college scheme that has really uh, infiltrated the NFL. So, you know, now I'm here. So a lot of the RPO stuff, you know, so it was great. And, you know, third down red zone studies. Uh, so we really got better. I got better uh, this off season and really trying to look at my scheme and how I want to really simplify things. I really came to the conclusion that, you know, you really need to minimize the volume and maximize the execution. And, you know, trying to put things in perspective to where, uh, when I say simplify, when you use that term, a lot of people think it, you mean easy. That's not saying that the scheme is easy, but you want to be able to allow your guys to play fast. And particularly at this level where you got up-tempo, uh, no-huddle stuff, I don't like guys thinking. I want them to be able to process things, break the huddle quickly, line up and play fast so they can, you know, play to the attributes. Jack Sobel from the Man Eater, go ahead. Wilkes, uh, I don't know how much how much film you've watched so far since you've got the job, but which which of the current players do you see kind of kind of being impact guys in your scheme so far? Well, I, I I haven't really indulged a lot into it. Just really, when I started watching tape, I really was mostly looking at the actual scheme itself and trying to figure out you know what I wanted to implement. Uh, as the staff gets together, we're going to start you know evaluating you know who's here within the roster now. Uh, also, the recruits that we're looking at and trying to see how they fit within our system. Uh, I think, you know, the one assessment that I did come away with, I felt like we had, you know, uh, some talent on the on the defensive side of the ball. I felt like, you know, we can trend in the right direction for us moving forward, just trying to fill some pieces. Uh, you know, everything we do starts up front. Uh, that's what I believe in this system. And when you look at a guy like Jeff Coat, you know, we're definitely going to be able to you know, build around him. Uh, so, you know, we're going to be aggressive. Uh, linebackers playing downhill, DB's breaking on the ball. I heard someone earlier mention, you know, my background with Lovey Smith and everywhere I've been, you know, it's been about taking the ball away, you know, and the, and the ball disruption that Drink just talked about. So our mindset is going to be fundamentally sound, you know, running to the football, being physical. Uh, I have a, a certain thing when you talk about DNA you know, and what I look for in players. And that's number one is the physicality and effort. You know, we, we, when they turn that film on in SEC, you know, we want to make sure that we're known as the most physical football team throughout. And we play with extreme effort, you know. Number two is playing smart. It's hard to win on Saturday. It's hard to win on Sundays. You know, and one thing you can't do, you can't beat yourself. Coach Drink talked about situational football. So we want to make sure that we're smart and understand the game and we're not beating ourselves. And lastly, finish. And that finish is not just trying to finish in the game, but also finishing the classroom, finishing the weight room, finishing the training room. Uh, so that's going to be our mindset and our DNA as we move forward. Ben Arnett, KMU. Steve, Eli mentioned that uh, hiring somebody with uh, previous head coaching experience for this position was attractive to him. 
as somebody to kind of be a sounding board and, and help him get better. Um, how, how do you think that uh, you can use your previous head coaching experience to, you know, not only help help players, but help the coaching staff? I think exactly what you just said, you know, it's experience. So, you know, I, I lived in those shoes. I walked in those shoes. I understand situations that come up that doesn't have anything to do with football. You know, it's all about trying to put out fires and uh, how you deal with things accordingly. So uh, I can definitely, you know, reflect and, re and refer back to those things when the conversations come up, uh, as he alluded to and talked about, you know, coming back uh, yesterday from Charlotte, you know, we had a, uh, in-depth conversation about scheduling, how we can really get better in, in the structure of practice and the things we want to try to implement there. So, um, you know, it's just bouncing ideas off one another. So we see Parada, Kansas City Star. Hey, Steve, just wondering, with Eli being one of the youngest coaches in the nation, did you kind of feel that energy from him when he was making the sell and just what you see kind of long-term with him here in Mizzou? Uh, I do. Uh, again, it's just like... Um, you know, he, he's he's definitely, I, I would say, a great recruiter, you know, and, um, you know, the uh, the demand and the uh, the phone calls and the text messages that uh, he was, you know, giving me and putting out to me. And every time we talked, I, I just continued to just believe in everything that he was saying and uh, his values uh, align with mine. And uh, I always said this, and this is one of the things I learned back from Tyrone Willingham, and I see it also within Drink. The speed of the pack is determined by the speed of the leader. And uh, he's doing a tremendous job in the things that he's doing. And um, uh, I feel, uh, again, right in line because those are my core values. And I've always said, you know, I take identity of my position group. I take identity of the uh, defense. And I take responsibility for that. And uh, those are the things I want to make sure I surround myself with, those kind of people. Colin O'Brien, Jefferson City Hey, Coach Wilkes. Yeah, welcome to Columbia. Do, are you committed yet to a, a, a scheme or a set of fronts or anything like that yet? Or is that kind of coming as you do player evaluation? Well, um, it's going to be, uh, you know, what I've done in the past, you know, base 4-3. And really, really, when you look at this college game, it's really, you know, 4-2-5 uh, because they spread you out all the time. So you got to get that extra DB on the field. Uh, there's times based off who we're playing, you know, it could be, you know, University of Georgia, where they may go more of 12 personnel, we may adjust a little bit, you know, but we can get in and out of an even front to an odd front based off who we're playing. And most importantly, as you just alluded to, just evaluating our talent, you know, and just trying to put those guys in position to be successful. That's going to be the key thing as, as, as coaches. And uh, Coach Drink talked about it. Our staff, and this is what I believe in, uh, I've always – Pride of myself in this, and this is what I try to surround myself with, is a great communicator. That's what coaching to me is all about. You know, guys that are great communicators. And what I mean by that is not how eloquent you may speak or the big words that you use, but it's your ability to be able to relate to different players and how you can get the best out of them. And that uh, correlates with your teaching. You know, uh, I don't think we get a lot of credit from the mere fact of you know, we just, we're like professors, you know, we teach. And uh, I think that's the most important thing. And your curriculum may be different, you know, based off your student. And I think as a communicator, you got to find different ways to get there. And lastly, it's just developing players. And I've created a reputation uh, throughout the years, college and pro, uh, taking, you know, a fifth, sixth, seven round free agent guy and uh, developing that guy and really, getting him uh, financially secure with him and his family. So I see the th same thing here in college. You know, we may not always get the five-star players, all right? But that's the thing about it is we're going to shoot for them. But if we get a four-star, we're going to make them a five. We get a three, we're going to make them a five. And that's our job as coaches. Uh, Andrew Kaufman, KMIG. Kind of going off of that, one of those, you know, lower-ranked guys ended up being like a five-star. There's one of your former players, Marcus Golden. Um what what do you what did he tell you about the the Mizzou program? I'm sure you guys have had some conversations recently uh, about the history of Mizzou's defense, especially with when Golden was around. Well, j just speaking of Marcus itself, and, and I was telling some of the coaches is that, you know, when you really look at the history, and, and you mentioned Marcus, you know, Alden Smith, you know, Sheldon Richardson, you know, Coney Ely, you know, you're talking about three of the four that I coached: Carolina, Cleveland, as well as Arizona. So. Uh, this program is known to get good players. And, and regardless of where they come in from a standpoint of their rankings, 
is what we're able to do once they get here. And, and that's our goal. I know Drink has talked to me about this on several occasions. We got to make sure that within our state, you know, we try to go and get the best players here. And that's where we're going to start. And then we're going to feel free and go out from there. But Marcus talked very highly of this place. Uh, of course he would. He has a lot of pride about this university. He told me, he said, coach, you're going to love it. Uh, and uh, one of the great things with me is that, uh, again, it's just the people that you're around. And that's the reason why I think this place is going to be so special. Mitch, 40, Parma, Duke. Steve, I'm just curious how familiar you are with uh, Jethro Franklin, the defensive line coach who's about to be named or about to be hired. And uh, I guess in, how involved were you in, in him uh, taking this position? Uh, I know Jethro real well. Uh, our relationship goes all the way back to college when uh, we both were on the recruiting trail. He was at uh, University of um, Southern California and I was at the University of Washington. So. Uh, and then we both got into the National Football League. So I've known Jeff Rowe for a while, uh, tremendous uh, leader. Everything that I just talked about, uh, great communicator, great teacher. He's developed players over the years. Uh, one that I just mentioned, Alden Smith, he coached him. So uh, he is a guy that I feel like is going to bring a lot to the program uh, just with his mere fact of just being a fundamentalist. Okay, last two questions for Coach Wilkes. First is Gabe Beyond the Power Museum. Steve, will you, uh, in addition to, to being the coordinator, will you coach safeties like Ryan Walters did, or will you reorganize some of the, the positional responsibilities? Uh, right now, we're still in the process of um, really communicating that. I'm going to sit down with the staff and just organize things to where I feel like it's going to best benefit us. But um, I would tell you uh, I'm, I'm chopping at the bit uh, to really get back and have a position. Uh, as I talked about before, just looking at the years in Carolina and different places where I've been uh, developing guys you know, like Josh Norman, Captain Mullen, et cetera. Uh, 18, I was a head coach, uh, overseeing everything, didn't have a position in a Cleveland defensive coordinator. And uh, of course, last year, taking some time off. So I'm looking to get and, and uh, have a major impact and put my hands on these guys each and every day. Final question, Colin O'Brien, Jeff City News. Yeah, Steve, after being out of coaching this last year, I'm sure you talk with active coaches a lot. Just what's what's some things you learned about the the challenges of this profession um, and doing so while while there's a pandemic going on? Well, I, I think you have to find really um, creative ways to continue to uh, reach your guys. And that's some of the things that um, when Esco and I uh, was doing our study, uh, we talked about that in, you know, virtual walkthroughs you know, where you have animated things where uh, the formation may start out in a two by two and then you motion to a three by one, you know, different things like that. And I showed a little bit of that in my interview with uh, Drink, uh, just saying how we can really reach the guys if we ever get to that point to where we don't have in-person uh, meetings anymore that, you know, as a coach, as a teacher, you got to find creative ways again to get to your students. So uh, that was one of several uh, that we talked about. Okay, that'll do it for today. Thank you, Coach Wilkes. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, guys. Take care.